should you get the AWS certified cloud practitioner certification? Now, this question comes up uh, often on Reddit and other AWS forums. And there's also a comment on my cloud practitioner certification course video on the channel here, uh, claiming the cloud practitioner certification is a useless cert. Well, is it? Uh, should you consider the cloud practitioner certification or should you skip it and jump straight to one of the AWS associate level certifications first? In this video, we'll look at who the certification is actually targeted at, uh, the benefits of doing the AWS CCP exam, uh, the costs involved, and why some people may want to skip it. All right, let's dive in. So first, welcome to the channel if you're new here. Uh, I'm Mike Fisher, and the channel is all about cloud and DevOps topics to help you on your certification journey and uh, learning new cloud and DevOps skills. Uh, I've got a lot more videos and topics planned uh, for the channel very soon, so uh, consider subscribing to stay up to date on all those new videos. Now, this video is a bit of a follow-up to my recent popular AWS CCP certification course and practice exam videos, and I wanted to address that question of, uh, is the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner right for you? Now, there's a lot of debate on popular forums around whether the AWS CCP certification is worth doing. Now, the short answer here for a lot of people is yes, it's 100% worth doing, uh, but it depends. Now, the argument for why a lot of people suggest to skip the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification and go straight to the Solutions Architect Associate one is that there's a lot of overlap of topics between the two. Now, while this is partially true, there are some important focus areas of the CCP certification that aren't in the other AWS certifications, uh, even at the professional or specialty level tracks. So first, who is the target person that should be looking at taking the AWS CCP certification exam? Well, the AWS CCP certification is AWS's foundational level certification. They have a general recommendation that you'd have about six months of experience with AWS in some form. Uh, now, this uh, length of experience isn't a requirement for taking the exam, and that amount of time can be cut down to uh, you know a few weeks with some focused study and effort to ramp up on the foundational AWS topics covered in the AWS exam guide blueprint. Now, the key point that many overlook when making the argument to skip the CCP certification is that it's targeted at those new to cloud computing technologies and Amazon Web Services. It's the foundational certification offered by AWS. The certification scope covers the baseline knowledge you'll need to build on with the other certification tracks. The associate, professional, and specialty certifications largely assume that you already know these topics and services that are covered in that cloud practitioner certification scope. Another very important factor is that beyond the cloud practitioner level, the other AWS certifications start getting quite technical and require some real-world hands-on experience with the services and topics to really grasp the material and succeed on the exams. There are, however, a ton of high-paying cloud technology roles out there that don't necessarily require that deeper hands-on technical knowledge. Salespeople are a good example here. Uh, maybe a person works in a technology sales role or a company that offers solutions that run on AWS as a hosting platform, or they offer products on the AWS marketplace. Um, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg here, uh, but you get the idea that for some of these types of roles, it may be important to have an understanding of the benefits of cloud and AWS and understand the core AWS services uh, to have more of these business level sales conversations. These types of roles are unlikely to be working with the AWS command line interface or configuring resources or coming up with uh, solutions architectures on a day-to-day -day basis, but they still need a good understanding about cloud computing and AWS to be effective in their role and provide value in the conversations they're having with clients about uh, what they're selling. The AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam scope is perfect for these types of sales roles. Now, another role example may be a product manager or someone in a leadership position at a technology company. If the company is looking at migrating to the cloud and AWS, or if they already use AWS today and need to manage a product delivery or something that they host on AWS, it's important that people in these roles have a good baseline understanding of cloud concepts and core AWS services to help understand the conversations going on within the organization and help make better product decisions or drive cloud adoption within their company. So again, the cloud practitioner certification is ideal for these types of roles as well. And for these non-technical cloud and AWS types of roles, the cloud practitioner certification may be the end of the line for their certification journey. Uh, they simply don't have the job scope that requires that deeper technical expertise with AWS to be effective in their role. 
Uh, there typically wouldn't be any benefit or reason to move on to the other AWS certifications after the cloud practitioner for their needs. Uh, so in this case, the cloud practitioner is 100% worth it for people in this situation. It's the perfect topic scope and really the difference of getting an AWS certification that you know fits your job role and validates your cloud knowledge versus not doing an AWS certification at all uh, makes it an easy decision in my mind. Then there's people that are looking at a complete career shift. Uh, maybe they're in a non-technical role today, but are interested in getting started with a high paying career in cloud technology, but uh, just don't know where to start. Uh, the AWS certified cloud practitioner is a great first step. Now, another common situation is where folks already have some IT experience, but are looking to advance their career and use AWS certifications as a way to make their skills and resume stand out from the crowd. Uh, it's common to have you know, ambitions to get multiple AWS certifications, or maybe all of them at some point, uh, but today are new to cloud and AWS and have never taken an AWS exam before. Uh, the cloud practitioner certification provides that easier first step along this journey. Again, the AWS associate level exams expect a broad foundational knowledge of cloud and AWS already, and the exam topic scope builds on this, and they layer on adding more depth and complexity to the exam scope uh, with coverage of many more AWS services, uh, how they interact, and how to use them together to solve problems and develop full architectural solutions, uh, as well as having that you know, hands-on experience to actually implement these solutions. So if you're a complete beginner with AWS, the scope of the associate level exams can be a bit overwhelming for many, and this often results in a lot of false starts. Uh, it can take tens to hundreds of hours to get really comfortable with the AWS associate certification exam topics if you're you know, just starting out and doing uh, self-study alone. Uh, many people start, uh, get too overwhelmed with all the stuff they need to cover, and find it hard to manage their study time with such a broad scope of topics to learn. With the Cloud Practitioner exam scope, uh, it has a much tighter focus on just the foundational cloud topics and core AWS services and concepts. Uh, by doing the Cloud Practitioner first, you have a much easier topic scope to budget your time and efforts towards. And by passing the exam, uh, it's a great feeling of progress, uh, making you want to tackle the next AWS certification challenge. And your efforts are never wasted. Uh, for some areas where there is topic overlap with the associate level certifications, uh, it just means you would already know this stuff and you know, it can greatly reduce the effort needed to study for the next certification step. Now, another important thing with the Cloud Practitioner Exam Scope is its focus on a lot of the billing aspects, um, AWS support plans, and uh, the fundamental benefits of cloud computing in AWS that often aren't covered directly or in the same way in the other AWS certifications. Uh, this stuff is largely assumed knowledge at this point, but I'd say there are some you know, areas in the Cloud Practitioner Exam topic focus that are still unique and it would be certainly worth diving into just so we have that most complete and solid foundation of cloud computing and AWS knowledge to build on in the future. So it should be clear that the Cloud Practitioner certification is certainly worth pursuing for a lot of people that are just getting started with cloud technologies and AWS, and those that work in a non-technical cloud and AWS-related job role, as really this is who this foundational level certification is targeted at. Now, I also wanted to get into the certification cost here a bit, as it's an important consideration for many people as well, deciding to take the Cloud Practitioner exam or to skip it. Uh, the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam costs 100 US dollars. Uh, and this can vary a bit uh, depending on where you live and different currency factors, uh, but we'll just use the uh, US dollar exam cost here as our baseline for this example. Uh, now for people that want to do the AWS Certified Solutions Architect certification, uh, that exam costs 150 US dollars. Uh, now, this is you know, a primary reason I've seen in forums that people suggest skipping the cloud practitioner, which is to you know, just pay the extra $50, uh, go straight to the Solutions Architect Associate exam. Um, now, I mentioned why this may be a bad idea for a lot of people just starting out, as it's you know, that really big first step if you're a complete beginner with AWS. Uh, but on the surface, it sort of makes sense. Uh, if you just sink some more study time and uh, just tackle the Associate exam for $150, uh, compared to the alternative path of doing the cloud practitioner for 100 uh, and then the associate level exam next for uh, 150, um, you're investing $250 in exam fees if you go the uh, cloud practitioner first and take the uh, associate level exam next. But there's a huge consideration with the AWS benefits you get once you become AWS certified at any certification level. One of these benefits is that uh, once you get a certification, AWS provides a 50% discount voucher you can apply towards your next certification exam fees. Now, if you factor this discount in, 
our overall exam fee investment looks something like this. So here we take the more bite-sized foundational level cloud practitioner certification first, which costs us that $100. Uh, we pass the practitioner exam and become AWS certified. Uh, then we have that 50% off voucher to apply towards the associate exam. So that $150 associate level exam fee uh, now just suddenly became $75. So taking the cloud practitioner to associate certification path, our exam fee investment is $175 in total, uh, $100 for the cloud practitioner and $75 for that half-price associate exam now. So really, there's only a $25 difference of going the path of taking the cloud practitioner first. Uh, that extra $25 is money very well spent, in my opinion. Uh, first, you get that more foundational first step to learning cloud and AWS, so you don't you know get bogged down with too large of a study scope. Uh, you also get to experience the AWS exam itself and get used to how it works. Uh, you get familiar with the uh, testing center or the steps involved with taking the exam online in a you know lower pressure situation. Uh, the cloud practitioner exam questions are a lot less wordy, uh, so there's typically not that same time pressure with the uh, cloud practitioner exam compared to the associate level and other exams. Uh, by doing the CCP first, you now know uh, you know what to expect on the AWS certification exams. Uh, so you don't have any extra pressure when you go into the uh, next one. Then, of course, I still feel that by taking the cloud practitioner first, there's some core fundamental areas covered in that topic scope that uh, are important for everybody to know. Uh, you want to have that foundation of knowledge as solid as possible before you journey into those associate, professional, and specialty level exams, and uh, more importantly, for the real world. And last but not least is sort of the obvious benefit that that extra $25 is getting you two AWS certifications now compared to just one. Now, I certainly understand that for people that have been working with AWS for a while and already in uh, you know technical hands-on roles, why they may want to skip the cloud practitioner certification. Uh, for their particular situation, it may make sense to skip over it. First of all, this foundational level certification scope isn't necessarily meant for them. Uh, they've likely already acquired this foundational knowledge through their months or years of on-the-job experience. Uh, so for a lot of people in this scenario, the cloud practitioner certification may offer little value to them personally. So to wrap this up here, should you take the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Certification? Well, given all its benefits it can offer for that excellent starting point for people new to cloud technologies and AWS, and that it's the ideal certification type and scope for many that work in cloud and within AWS in those non-technical roles, then even if you're after the associate level or higher certification later, the CCP is that perfect low-pressure certification just to get used to the AWS exam experience. Uh, then with that 50% uh, discount exam voucher factored in when you pass the cloud practitioner for that extra $25 overall cost of getting uh, two AWS certifications compared to just one. Uh, so for most people, the answer is yes. The cloud practitioner certification can offer a lot of value and provide a lot of benefits for a lot of people. Now, if you're looking to get started with the cloud practitioner certification yourself, uh, there's a lot of great resources offered by AWS through their uh, skill builder training site and there's tons of other great courses around to get you started. Uh, I also have a free AWS certified cloud practitioner course here on the channel, along with a practice exam video, which will help you become very well prepared to uh, pass the cloud practitioner exam. So I hope this video was helpful for you to uh, help make that decision whether to pursue the cloud practitioner certification or not. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're planning on taking the cloud practitioner certification exam, or you've ultimately decided to skip it for your given situation. Uh, either way, all the best with your cloud learning voyage and consider subscribing to stay up to date with more cloud and DevOps certification related videos coming really soon. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.